What's going on racers and thank you for tuning in to another episode of JB Trucker RC. This is the second episode this week continuing my pre-tire break-in tutorials. The other video we covered the foam tires, what I do for my foam tires on dirt oval. This video we're going to be covering my process for my rubber tires. Now this episode is going to be a little bit more broad. Okay, we're going to be talking about my methods here are going to be fairly same. There's going to be some differences and we'll talk about in the video. But we can do our dirt oval tires for our Traxxas based and buggy based uh, racing, our drag racing tires, as well as any other kind of rubber tire compound. I'm going to be including my touring car tires in this tutorial and so on and so forth. Um, the main part of the tutorial, I'm using these tires, but the method is going to remain the same. Some of these methods, you can use the tire truer. Some of them you can't. You're going to have to use a drill or the old, put them on the car, scuff them on your, uh, your uh, pavement or, or, or top method. But this process is going to be the same way for all of them outside of a, a couple ways I scuff tires differently here and there. Again, we're going to actually discuss that in the video. And since the video too, I didn't prep or condition the tires at the end of the video. I do talk about it, but I actually just got in my uh, sticky icky cherry bomb tire conditioner. Uh, and I'm going to be using this on not only my drag tires, but my touring car tires as well, trying to get them softened up and prepped up and start ready, getting them ready for race day. Uh, but guys, the methods that you're going to see in this video, again, these are my methods. There's other ways of doing it. Um, there's no, you know, there's, that's the thing about RC racing. You learn someone's method. Uh, you're going to figure out your own method. You're going to find things that you prefer to do, uh, your own methods. It's going to evolve. There's going to be other people tell you different ways. So I just want to drop that disclaimer. This is my method, and this is just me trying to help some of you newer racers out there get in your pre-tire break-in game a little bit better. That way you can hit the track, be a little more ready, have a little bit better results right off the bat. But well, guys, with all that said, I hope you enjoy the video. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Let's jump right into it. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me for the part two of my pre-tire break-in method tutorial videos that I'm doing. And uh, this time we're gonna be uh, discussing the rubber tire process. My rubber tire process that I've been using um, for many years now. Um, and if you're wondering what in the world are these big street stock tires, dirt oval tires, and these big drag tires doing on top of this lathe because they won't fit, you're absolutely right. But the method that I'm going to be using as an example in this video, which are these tent scale touring car tires, I do this sometimes with um, the, uh, the cap tires for uh, pan car racing, rubber tires, so on and so forth. Certain tires I do some pre-break-ins with, certain tires I don't. They fit on here and the process remains the same. If with these not fitting on the actual tire truer, what do I use? I have a jig made up that has a hex cap that you'd put in on the back side of the wheels that would hold it. You'd run the, a nut on the threaded rod and then I would chuck it up in a drill. I can't find that right now, um, but I can, I can use that method. If you don't have anything that you can chuck up these rubber tires, drag car tires on, or these uh, the street stock or dirt oval tires for, what you can do is mount these on obviously the rear of your vehicle, obviously for a drag car, but you can alternate on your slash or dirt oval car, um, the fronts and the rears, move them to the back side. Go outside on your driveway, you know, hit the throttle. Don't go wide open, but just kind of bump and run the throttle a little bit and scuff the tires on pavement that will break them in, uh, do a pre-break-in as well. And again, less is more, guys. Don't get too crazy with it. You don't want to burn in. You don't want to ruin a new tire. But you can see on these brand new drag tires, you can see some of the flashing. We want to get rid of that. We want to get rid of the um, outer mold release agents that's on the tires. Sometimes that stuff can help prevent your pre-break-in tire prep from actually getting in the tire and doing its job. Um, this one here, you can see, still has a little bit of the center one, although these have been scuffed already. Now, one thing I want to show you, this is what it's going to look like before. On this touring car tire, you can still see it's got some center flashing. You can kind of see the uh, shininess, the glaze from the mold release agents. There's still some shine here, but I want you to focus primarily on the tread itself. You're going to see the tread on this tire is a little more dull. The center flashing is gone. Okay, so... If I'm not using the pavement method by, you know, burping the throttle and getting the, the mold release agents cleared off the tire and the center seams off, which I'm going to do on the drag tires as well, um, but we're using this as an example. This same method will, is what I use for dirt oval, 
um, drag car and touring car tires and paved oval cap tires, so on and so forth, okay? Same method I use for all of these. Um, so what we're going to do, I already did this tire, but I'm going to do a front and a rear just so you can see the process. So obviously we're going to go ahead and get our adapter, our hex adapter on there. And then I'm going to run my tire on and then we're going to just go ahead and get this on the truer itself. And guys, again, I just want to say my disclaimer. This is my method. There are other methods out there. But this is, I'm just trying to help out some newer racers that might be looking at bettering their tire program, getting some pre-break-in, so on and so forth, okay? Um, so from here, I'm just going to take some sandpaper. Um, as far as like the grit-wise, guys, I've used all kinds of sandpaper. I don't use anything that's like extremely aggressive. You know, in, in the, I don't know, probably, I think this is four. What is this? What is this? I want to make sure I tell you the right. This is 400 grit, I believe. Um, this is usually what I use. Um, I've used, like I said, I've used more aggressive. I usually don't use any like less aggressive than this. Um, but this is going to be more than enough to help knock off that glaze and to get that uh, uh, center mold flashing off the tire. So, well, it's a simple process, okay? I'm going to turn on the truer. Or if you got one of these bigger tires choked up in the drill, same method, okay? And I'm gonna take my sandpaper. You can see it just getting rid of that flashing. Just a little bit of pressure out and back. Be very careful when doing this. And again, guys, less is more, okay? So whenever I turn that off, the center flashing is gone. The, tread, the outer treads themselves have now been scuffed and sanded and chewed up a little bit, okay? Now the, the, the tire prep will be able to get to it. And one last step I like to take is I have this wire brush. Um, it's, I don't even, this is just a stainless steel curved brush, okay? It's something I've had for a long time. I don't use this long, but I want to get between those treads a little bit too. I want that tire to soak in those solutions a little bit. And that's it. I'm not going to hit it a long time with this. What am I even using that for? I'm going to show you. Because part of this pre-tire break-in is, is we're basically not trying to knock off some of that mold release stuff, the mold release agents that they got um, on the tires from whenever they pull the molds off. And then, <coughs> and then we're going in and we're scuffing the tread and getting rid of the mold release agents and the wire brush, what it does is it gets between the tread a little bit, okay? That's the reason. I don't use it long. I don't use it long at all because I don't want to chew up the tire or ruin the tire. But I use that to get just slightly more aggressive um, on the tread and then get between the tread a little bit. You can still see, you know, it's still a little bit more glossy between there. But with that wire brush, that's going to help get in there just a little bit more, okay? So again, here's one that we just broke in. Here's the other one. And you can see a little bit of the difference in the finish and all that kind of stuff. Now, by knocking all the mold release agent off and scuffing the tires a little bit, what it's, what it's going to allow the tire to do is soak in your, your uh, tire conditioners or tire preps or whatever that you may um, you know, be doing to pre-prep your tires. Um, I've been told, well, I know from experience with some of the drag cars and the dirt oval stuff, now, I know what my routine is there. I'm learning my routine for the touring car stuff a little bit. Um, but but go, going off uh, based of what I, from prior knowledge, I'm applying it here the same way. And I've been told by some of my fellow racers, these tires need a little bit of work anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that to another tire. And then I'm going to show you the rest of my process. We're going to go ahead and get a rear done on the video as well. And then we'll talk about the prepping side and the final stage of this here shortly. Now the rear's done. 
a little bit of a pre-tire break in. And again, guys, the same concept applies. I do the same thing to this, to the dirt oval tires and the drag tires. Now, I do not take the wire brush to the drag tires, okay? Let me go ahead and clear that up now. The purpose of the wire brush that I use in my method here is to get into some of the treads for the treaded areas, okay? If it's a smooth tire like a drag slick, I do not use that. I just use some of the sandpaper method um, or on the uh, uh, asphalt or pavement somewhere and get those seams off and, and get that mold legion off and so on and so forth, okay? So I just want to specify that. I don't want anybody to ruin the tire. And again, guys, this is my method. This is something that I've used for years. Um, on the dirt oil side and I'm applying it to my touring car tires as well, okay? But again, you can see the difference. This tire is now more dull than this one. It's gonna be chewed up a little bit. It's gonna soak in, uh, be willing to soak in prep a little bit more because it's not gonna have all those mold release agents on that outer side of the tire. You can see this one still has the flashing as well. So now, what's my next step in the rubber tire prepping process? Now that I've got my tires pre-broken in, the, 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 uh, the treads are gonna be able to soak in your preps or conditioners or whatever. At this point here, I'm gonna take a Ziploc bag and it doesn't matter if I'm talking about, let me move this back guys so I can get a little bit more in the camera here. This is gonna be my same method no matter if I'm talking about my drag tires or my dirt oval tires or touring car tires or so on and so forth. My next step would be, and I'm not gonna show you because I'm actually waiting for some of my preps and conditioners to arrive. As most of you guys know, I run Sticky Icky. They are a sponsor of mine. Um, been uh, with them, this is going into my third season, so I'm waiting on some of my new preps to arrive. So I'm not gonna actually apply it on this video. You'll see me use it in the future. But what I would do here, for these cars here, I would be using some of the uh, Sticky Icky tire conditioner and I would be brushing it on with the dauber that it comes with, or if it's a rag and a squirt bottle, I'm gonna just wipe it on the tire. And then I'm gonna slide it in a Ziploc bag. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd be doing front, front, rear, and rear, but since those are the only ones that we've got done, I've still gotta knock this one out, this one will show. And then I'm gonna zip it up. I'm not gonna spray anything in the bag because you don't want it to be puddled up. If you get it puddled up, something that's aggressive, you could end up ballooning a side of the tire that would actually be up against you know, a, a puddle of whatever your conditioner or tire prep is. So that's how I would be doing this, okay? My method for dirt oval is a little bit different, guys. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my pre-break-in method for dirt oval. Once I get my tire scuffed in, which this one already is, I could probably uh, get a little bit more off of there. But it's all, the, the, the mold release glaze is gone. This tire is ready to soak in prep. My method here is the same as the touring car tires, but here's what I do. A Ziploc bag for each tire. Before I put it in the tire, I spray some PB Blaster on a rag, massage that into the tire, and then slide it in a Ziploc bag. These tires are big, so unless you got like one of the big freezer Ziploc bags, it's gonna be one tire to the bag, so on and so forth. So at that point, I would slide that in there and close that up and let it sit there for a while. Again, don't put a tire in a bag and spray it. That was a method I used years ago um, because that's what I was told to do and by some other racers. And if that method works for you, that's fine. But I had an instance where I had a tire that got set up against a puddle down here in the corner and I had a swollen, super soft spot on the tire. So again, guys, this is a pre-break-in method, okay? I, I just wanna get the tire softened up and get some prep soaked in to help improve grip and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the reason I have since changed my method to just brushing it on there. These tires here, again, I'm gonna be rubbing my sticky icky conditioner on here. My dirt oval tires, um, while I will be prepping with sticky icky, my normal pre-break-in process, just cause it's been the same thing for years, some PB blaster on a rag and just rubbing the tire, then Ziploc bag it and let it sit for a few days or before race day or whatever. Don't have to get super wet, but just rub it in a little bit. Um, same thing for my drag tires. In fact, my drag tire is gonna be the exact same method as my touring car tires. Once I get these broken in and scuffed, I'm hoping I can find my drill jig. If not, I'm gonna have to do the pavement method to get these broken in, pre-broken in. Get the mold release agents off and the seam off the tire. But once that's done, same method as these. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sticky, icky tire conditioner uh, with a dauber or rag, wipe it evenly around the whole tire. Then I'm gonna take this tire, 
and I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag for a little while. Yes, the tires are going to be slightly wet going in, but you don't want it dripping wet, not for the method that I use. Again, guys, I know in the comment section, somebody may be out there, well, this is what I do, or, or this and that and the other, or you're wrong, JB, because of this. That's fine. This is my method, and this is just for me sharing some of my knowledge um, with some of newer racers trying to help guys get their tire break-in method um, a little bit better, or if they don't even have or use a current tire pre-break-in method. This is just me trying to help those guys out and get something going. All right. So then on race day, these would be sitting in here with a conditioner on. I would probably check them through the week too. And then on race day, I'm gonna apply my prep, do my runs, clean them, so on and so forth. Same for these. It don't matter if I'm running this or that, okay? But this, uh, we can talk actual tire prep on another video. In fact, if you guys would like to see some of my prepping methods, um, let me know in the comment section. I'll be glad to incorporate that in future episodes. Um, but again, this particular episode was just my pre rubber tire break in methods and you can pretty much see all we do there you know our main focus is and i'm sorry i can't do this on the camera right now on this one guys um again i gotta see if i can find my jig if i can maybe i'll do a follow-up episode but again you can always put them on the car go do it on some uh concrete or asphalt somewhere but in the same method it don't matter what surface if you have a true or not same thing even if you got a touring car you could do it outside or a pan car, so on and so forth. But the main thing is, is you just want to get that uh, mold release agent glaze off the tires. You want to get the tires scuffed a little bit so it'll absorb some conditioners and preps and so on and so forth. Um, in fact, you know, it probably wouldn't even hurt to be a little bit more aggressive on the um, sandpaper for these, for certain tires, these tires more so than this. This tire here is a little bit of a harder tire than what this tire is here. I use the same sandpaper on these tires here, and I can tell that these got a little bit more chewed up than these off that sandpaper. So I probably, I probably should be a little bit more aggressive on these, but this is, you know, again, I just wanna share my method with you. Just don't go super aggressive. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna be getting rid of the treads. You don't wanna be shaving them down to anything, uh, you know, slicks or anything, unless you're wanting to run a slick tire, which in most cases you'd be doing, you know, running an actual slick tire anyway but the method stays the same guys again i do know that i could have went a little bit more aggressive on the sandpaper with these tires i didn't know that ahead of time um uh, like i said these are a little bit more harder than this um this is uh so uh now, now we know but uh, i may get i may go back and hit these with a little bit harder tire or, or sandpaper later on um, but I'm probably just going to go ahead and prep them and see how they do first now uh, for the simple reason that I did hit these with the wire brush a little bit too. And that does help scuff and get in between the treads a little bit more. But but guys, that pretty much sums it up for my rubber tire pre-break-in method. Um, again, uh, sorry I didn't have any prep with me or a conditioner to go ahead and get these and do that for you on the video. Um, but at least I explained the process to you. I'm just waiting on some of my preps to arrive. Well guys, that pretty much sums it up for my rubber tire pre-break-in method I do. Um, hopefully some of you newer racers out there, this is gonna help you along with the process. And again, guys, there's more than one way to do it. This is my method. These are methods that I've used for years now, um, have good success with it. Even though I haven't done touring in a while, that same concept, since this was the main uh, tire used in the video, is the same for the rest of them. Just different scuffing methods. And the fact that these won't fit on my tire truer, you're gonna either have to do it with a uh, drill um, mounting to a drill, they actually make jigs for that, or you can make your own, or bolt them on the car and scuff them like we talked about in the video. But guys, as always, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the support. If you're uh, newer to the channel and you're enjoying my content, please hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll get a notification every time I got a new upload. But again, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.